Good morning, everyone. Okay, I, to assure you, you are not sleepy. Too. <laughs> okay, I'm um, actually, um, I should deliver this talk uh, with my colleagues, two person talks, but he still sleep when I went out. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, he's not feeling well. So when when I, wa I was walking here, um, I stumbled upon this graffiti uh, on the alley near Perak, Perak Road. So it, I just took it two hours ago, and I think uh, this graffiti is so provoking for me. And it's resonated with my t uh, talks of, of land first. Okay, I'm Ans, I'm from Bandung. I work for Eviscery, it, it was an IoT startup uh, in aquaculture's, aquaculture's domain. Um, I, I don't know if, and have any one of you ever see this kind of shrimp ponds? Do you know where your shrimps come from your luxury seafood diner? This, this is the uh, shrimp ponds, and it's one of the fish ponds. And what is uh, what else they do? They usually feeding their fish traditionally by disperse the feed human, and this causing a lot of um, downside for them because overfeeding could cause fish death, and it happens in just a one night. A, f uh, a feed waste will um, go down the pond and it will release the ammonia and ammonia kills the fish. So we built a product like this and I do some hardware, I do some software, I do some data, but most of the time I do nothing. I just <laughs> talk with people. And actually we are practicing extreme programming, we caught by the pond. <laughs> Literally extreme programming. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, I changed my title, Talks to Simple Development. Rapid doesn't uh, really mean simple, but simple could be, can help us rapid. And it was kind of uh, absurd title, Offline First Web. It web, but offline first. So what's on the menu? We are talking with offline first, uh, accessing a port, uh, going out there, my own solution, my, um, and then we are talks uh, with an other works in this kind of area. So just like everybody else before, can you please raise the hand if you have, have ever heard offline first? Okay. Majority, like 80% haven't heard of Line First before. Okay, so I first uh, know the terms of Offline First like two years ago. We are building an application, an Android application for to be exact, and it's not working for our customers. And we found this site. It's, it's like kind of movement. It's like a cult organization. It, it, it's a little community that talks anything, libraries, anything technology can, that can work in third countries. So this, it's like more design, design approach for building application. So it's, not, it's more like a paradigm. It's not an um, abstract concept. It's a, like a paradigm how to build application. And so why you should care or why we should care? First thing, rural areas. Um, yesterday, um, speakers from India, Krishna or yeah, Krishna, talk about rural areas in India. So why? Because they were marginalized by technology. I don't know if um, we are creating technology for uh, rural areas, besides non-profit organization and social cause in Africa or, uh, or anything. And this one, uh, rural areas is one of our customers in Indonesia, and look at their network of rates. It was no internet connection, almost no internet connection on the seashore. So that one is in north of Java, if you ever heard uh, Java before in Indonesia, not just Bali. <laughs> I, I often meet people, and where you come from? Indonesia, oh Bali, Bali. Oh no, no, Bali, I'm from Bandung. Oh, Bandung, Indonesia? Yeah, it's Indonesia. Okay, and this data come from 2016. We have 
three billion internet user, but just one billion get access for high speed internet. It's just like one third of total users, and the others still living with connection, but nah, not necessarily good connection. The first one is India, China, and Indonesia, my country, comes third. So, why, <laughs> why we, we call this World Wide Web, but we just um, make it for the West, wealthy Western web? It's not my quotes, it's from Bruce Lawson, so it's, it's not biased from me, but yeah, I agree with, with him. So the term World Wide Web should be encouraged more. And why people? By 2050, we will have population boom. I mean, yeah, a lot of um, people going multiplied, married, have kids every year, every day. <laughs> but it will be an unconnected world because India, China, and Indonesia will have a massive population, but I don't know if uh, our infrastructure technology or network of threats will uh, catch up really fast by 2050. And maybe it was their first internet interaction by smartphone. Um, I have a story. One of our customers, um, they just know it was smartphone. They thought it was a smart remote control. At first month, uh, he only spent like uh, two gigabytes quota. But next year, when we come back again, his son using smartphone and spend more than 20 gigabytes quota. I think, wow, okay. Uh, we, thought we give them access and now they are consume more internet. But with 20 gigabytes quota, now his son playing drone flying drones in rural areas because he knows that, oh, this one drone and where, where, where can I buy it? So after, the, after he knows internet connection, he can learn much faster. He can learn, um, he, can, he can know anything by connectivity. Okay, that's good, but it comes with a drawback. Smartphone user, we are living in to, Ten, uh, 20 years before we are first exposed to internet by desktop application, and there's another barrier, barriers is design language. Icons and anything, it doesn't work with our users because they know their first interaction by smartphone. So they don't know what uh, hamburger icon is, what the home icon is. They just read the text. That's another barrier. And Next availability, you won't have connectivity to sing your data. So we have to remember this. And I took it from the distributed system, network fallacies. Network is your enemy. The network is never reliable. So if you think that network is reliable, then you can have to one of fallacies in distributed system. OK, so I already. Uh, show to you what's the problem, what's the, the initial cause, and how today's technology approach this problem. You know the traditional kinds of models, and this one is often first model. So with the traditional kinds of models, we are um, really have to access the cloud to get the page, but in the offline first model, the data, the assets, the anything should be on the client side. Well, it comes, progressive web apps comes with a solution. We have native look like, we have service worker, we have network cache, we have background sync, and you need just to create a manifest that can catch your um, assets. You, need, you have network cache that you, uh, yeah, you can uh, intercept the network request. So, is it progressive web apps enough? How about the data synchronization? How about config resolution? When your users online, you can transact data uh, real time. But when your user offline and your users mutate or modify the data, how about when they're coming online? How about to 
seeing this data. Okay, first we have progressive web apps to check the network. We have network casing, but the other evolution, uh, it's not a revolution, the other uh, movement of progressive is how to sync the data. Um, based on my experience, there's two types of synchronization, document state and command state. If you use Workbox, um, I, yeah, yesterday that, uh, that was a progressive web apps workshop, right? Uh, if you use Workbox and you use network um, background sync and network, uh, you can sync your application background by comment by storing the net what's the request and execute after you are online. It was a it is a comment state sync. So let's see about the document state. I borrowed from the Trello synchronization architecture. In it was the first time I I learned about synchronization. Any code that depends on the server logic has to be implemented in the client, and they only send the deltas of the data modification. It was a document state, so you have a prior document and your current document, and you're sending the delta state. It was a document state, and how about the comment state? Um, there's another library, uh, Redux, Redux Offline. Um, basically, it was write your uh, request to storage, and then if you are coming online, it will execute your um, re previous request sequentially. And it and I was um, using this kind of approach. Okay, but it's, it's terrible. If I use this document statusing and comment statusing, I should implement on the backend side the synchronization mechanism. How to conflict resolution with uh, users' data, and it all it was all handled on the backend side. It's a it's a cumbersome and really not a good experience for me. And then we know Rim IO or Google Cloud Visor. It, it is a backend as a service. It comes with uh, reactive synchronization. It, it comes with um, offline support, but it takes your money way too fast. <laughs> yeah, too fast. Um, I built a, uh, a little prototype uh, when, I, when Firestar just comes out one year ago, I think, one, one, a year ago. Uh, I did some bad, bad architecture or bad implementation, and it, it took $20 for a two weeks application. <laughs> That's bad. And I found CoachDB. It, it, was, it is an old document database. It's come before MongoDB become well known. It's, but it comes with PostDB. It's an implementation of CoachDB in JavaScript client. So the PostDB will, will could live in your application by JavaScript it, with a little or mm, a bit little size. And it, it has a approach with multi-master nodes. So actually, the database replication, the database not only on the cloud, but your device is also a database. And it comes with a HTTP protocol for replication. So no need, you don't, you don't have to create another sync mechanism because it was ready by the design. Okay, so what, actually what do we choose? Actually, for all of our software developers, we need some requirement. We need to web development ready, we need to mobile development ready, and time to implement faster. I don't put any economical constraint here. And I choose CoachDB and CoachDB with React. Why with React? Um, yeah, because I, <laughs> we, are, we are familiar with React and React Native, <laughs> that's why. And because React, uh, create React app already implemented Surface Worker already, so you just uh, uncomment, oh sorry, you just remove two words, the unregister, change it to register. <laughs> so, and that's, we, 
we got an offline first web app, but it's not a simple development. You got we have a lot of boilerplating, you have to make a lot of abstraction with the codes and PostDB. And we are uh, coming with the another ideas. How do what if we create reactive rendering for pods and codes? So your your application could render by um, instantly. Yeah, how to educate with React? Um, we think like a stat container. What if we create like a stat container to interfacing um, pods with page uh, centering site? And this was classic uh, approaching. We, are, we have server, we have component, renderer, and this component state. And if we introduce offline first by using this kind of thinking, if we use Redux, um, we have global state Redux that, that hold with local storage, that, that um, interact with server, interact with a component, and if we design with without Redux, you only uh, need a local storage to store your data state. And if you remember this one from the Trello, I think we're gonna use the offline first without Redux because it's much more similar with what other people already had, and we won't take another step to reinvent the wheel. So we're creating that container interfacing with data synchronization. We call it Pochi Store. Uh, it wasn't production ready yet, but uh, we use it for our internal tools. And we have a story, Pochi Store example, and it was a, it is a to-do list because nothing tutorial in the world that came without a to-do list sample app. <laughs> okay, this is how we initialize the store. We, uh, you just need to set your URL remote config and your uh, authentication if it's uh, available. And this one is for the component side. Um, you, uh, when the component mount, you have to subscribe the the API to render to render your pets reactively. And if you want to add some item, you just call the add item API, and for delete, to, you, could, you could just call the delete item. So we abstracted more of uh, pods code, a pods implementation to add and to delete item. And w if you want to fetch the data, you could just call the dot the data, it contains your data, and you can play with it. Because this one, this is our store looks like in detail. You have local DB, local DB, you have remote DB, and it will replicate from and synchronize from lo local and cloud, um, vice versa. And it, wa it, it is watch your, it, it was watching your data changes. So basically your, uh, your application will read from the memory, not from the local storage. And it comes with CRUD API. CRUD method is ready, so you don't have to create another boilerplate. Fewer lines of code. Um, we, are, we put improvement for reactive rendering. But how about the React Native support? Because we, we want to uh, make mobile development ready also. Um, Pods store, Pods application, uh, sorry, Pods libraries use IndexedDB. And it will fall back to WebSQL if uh, there isn't IndexedDB. But how about React Native? WebSQL and SQL, uh, Pods use WebSQL. React Native can use SQLite. Why not create an adapter for React Native for SQLite adapter? And we stumble upon Cordova SQLite storage, and we, we just modified uh, React Native, Pods React Native implementation by 
um, I forgot, by async storage, by async storage to use the escalate storage. Why we use escalate storage? Because it's much larger and much bigger. IndexedDB can, can hold about 50 to 60 megabits. I, I think I forgot the exact number, and escalate could do also. Okay, so we got a simple development of an first web app with interactive rendering, and it's, it is syncing data online, uh, this one from web, and this one from mobile. You can upload it. And if it goes offline, you can use your app as usual. And if we are playing with the data, and we can sync directly after it has a connection. So no need to uh, create another boilerplate, but we still have problem with uh, browser limitation about max connection. And we still have a basic features, need to implement another selective filtering. And my lesson most, most Conclusion is do not create your own sync mechanism. It's a, t it's a nightmare to create your own <laughs> sync mechanism. <laughs> and for other works, uh, you, ha you could see the others like GunDB, Local for Software by Martin Kleppmann. You should uh, read about Martin Kleppmann. Okay, I think the half of these talks li like become a lecture because it was too technical. <laughs> but I, I often to have a talk with offline first, and yeah, you can ping me if you want. Thank you.